Grade 7. What a terrible surprise to see you here in my attic. We are today going to launch the lab practical um, for this unit, for this first unit. And the lab practical is all about choices. In particular, we're going to do an experiment to see what mealworms prefer. That's our entire topic. We're going to try and find out what these particular insects prefer. Now, this means that we're going to need, obviously, first of all, to have some mealworms. These are our friends, the mealworms. I'm going to switch in my high-tech setup to our uh, other camera angle. This is where I'm going to be showing you today how we're going to run our experiment, or one of the ways that you can run your experiment. Now, inside of what on other days would actually literally genuinely be my lunchbox, I have a lovely selection of mealworms. Now, you guys are going to get to meet these in person, um, and as I'm sure you've read, as I hope that your uh, teacher has or will reassure you fairly soon, these are perfectly non-dangerous creatures. Let me uh, pick a few up for you. Here they are. They're going to quite happily wander around on my hand. When you uh, see them up close, you'll notice a few things about them. They have a few legs on the front. Uh, they move kind of slowly. They sort of they seem to notice the space around them. You, you take time to watch them. You know, they'll kind of move forwards, they'll move backwards. They're pretty much indestructible, which doesn't mean you shouldn't be careful with them. But it does mean, for instance, if you pick them up gen gently, if you put them gen down gently, you can't very much hurt them. When they're nice and warm at room temperature, they'll move around nicely as these particular mealworms are doing. Now, I've got my mealworms. That's safe. I'm going to show you guys not only how to do this experiment or you know the outline of how to do this experiment, <clears throat> I'm also going to show you how to do it at home, which is very important in case any of you uh, do need to stay at home. That's the reason that instead of doing this demonstration in the lab, we're doing it upstairs in my attic. Now, to start off with, I, I guess I need to introduce to you what I'm thinking about for my research question. So I found it kind of interesting to think about mealworms and to think about maybe what they preferred to live underneath or what they preferred to live around. Now, I've brought some options in from outside in the garden. I've uh, given my wisteria a little crimp and I've brought in some leaves and I've dug up a bit of my path and I've brought in some gravel. I'll take those secateurs out. They don't necessarily belong there. So it's not for them useful later. Now, I need to find out whether or not the mealworms prefer the gravel or the leaves. And I'm going to go about this in a particular way. I'm going to make a little, well, something called a choice chamber. Pop this over there. Pop my mealworms out of the way for now. And I'm going to bring in the ever trusty squared notepad from Nahima. Now, a choice chamber is a lovely and straightforward thing in science. All you do is you take an environment and you divide it in two. Let me get me there. There we go. Got a childproof lid on it, apparently. Let's take myself a nice coloured pen. I'm going to work out. I think the centre of my paper is about here, so I'm going to make myself a little drop zone in the middle. Drop zone there. And drop zone. Drink. I'm going to divide my little piece of paper in half. On this side, I'm going to put the leaves. And on this side, I'm going to put the stones. Hopefully, I can tear this off nicely. Not quite. It's clearly 
talent I'm yet to master in life. Having got that nicely paired off, it's cool enough, I guess. I can put it on the bottom of this lovely oven dish. For now, it doesn't quite fit, so let's fold it back to fit. In the lab, you guys will get lovely ready-made ones of these, laminated and printed out by the lab technicians, whom you're welcome to thank for that. And they will fit beautifully in the green trays that you guys get. So when you're thinking about the equipment to order, if you decide to order green trays, then I'll cut the corners off. If you order green trays and the choice chamber templates, then you'll instantly get a set that fits. But for those of you who might not have that luxury, I'll show you guys today a nice way to do it actually. And there we go. Let's try and make sure that those sit nicely there. So you guys can see that. I've got part for stones, part for leaves, a drop zone in the middle. Now trying to be scientific. Let's shake in some stones. Got bits of no. being scientific, I'm gonna take out the little extra bits. There's some bits of like leaf in there. Luckily no snails have come in with this. Bits of moss, bits of leaves. There we go. Bonus, beautiful, out it comes. I'll keep my drop zone clear. So I've got half of my tray set up with stones. Now let's have a bit of trim. My leaves. Try and spread those out a bit. Got half of my tray. They do quite nice actually. I'm kind of pleased with that. Half of my tray set up for leaves. So in this experiment, I can test which environment do mealworms prefer, stones or leaves. Now you guys are not going to have to choose two but four different environments. This is why, uh, this is why you guys get the grades and we just get to stick to what we're doing. That will pop back in a bit. Now, imagine I were to do a really bad job of this experiment. If I was to be a really bad scientist, well, what might I do? I might come along and say, right, let's, let's, let's try that. We escape. There we go. Let's have a look at him. Is he moving? Ooh, it's quite, it's quite lively, this one. I might say to myself, well, I want to see what a mealworm thinks. I'll pop him in and I'll, I'll watch what he does. So there we go. Huh? can see him. That's really clever. And uh, this mealworm has gone right under those leaves. If we lift it up, there he is. He's gone straight under the leaves. I'm an awful scientist at this point, my word. And I would say to myself, 100% as a conclusion, all mealworms love leaves. I'm going to give you a serious loop down the camera and say, seriously, do we think that's good enough conclusion? Do we have enough data to say that? The answer has to be no. The answer has to be a massive, definite no. So, it might, oh, he's gone, he's back. Right there. You guys are not going to believe this. It's like, it's gone right, it's gone under the stones. Look, right there. It's literally, he's escaped. No. It's time for a new conclusion, people. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> conclusion two. 
mealworms cannot make their mind up about what they prefer. Let's get this back up here so that we can record what we see. Now, you might ask yourself a few things at this point, and I think it'd be kind of wise to. You might ask yourself, should I be doing this experiment with only one mealworm? And now how long do I need to watch the mealworm for? And when do I need to take my measurements? Now, I have a few choices here. I could you put one mealworm in the drop zone at the start, or I could put two, I could put five, I could put ten. We're going to have plenty of mealworms, huh? This many mealworms is one euro's worth of mealworms. Okay, so you guys are going to have access to at least... 10 per experimental pair. So that is a that's a good thing to know at the start. You guys might also want to think, well, when do I take my measurements? Do I give them five minutes to settle in? Do I give them 10 minutes to settle in? Do I take the measurements just once at the end of the experiment? Do I take my measurements every minute for a longer period of time? As you're planning your experiment, it's crucial that you're thinking to yourself, how will I have enough data to answer my research question? Now, luckily for you guys, every mealworm measured at every moment is a data point. So think about how you can get enough data to write a good quality answer to your research question and plan that particular experiment. Now, chaps, let's summarize what we've said we have a bunch of mealworms the mealworms are nice we can give the mealworms a choice of environments and by watching where the mealworms go we can see what they prefer if i put in one mealworm oh it's alive thank goodness for that if I put in one mealworm, then I can find out what that one mealworm prefers at that one moment in time. If I put in two or five or ten mealworms, then I get two or five or ten times more data at every moment. It could be that I choose to measure where the mealworms are after five minutes or after ten minutes or every minute for a period of time. You need to decide what data you need to answer your research question and you need to collect it accordingly. Now chaps, very, very good luck. Be sure to make the most of the advice that your science teacher has to give to you and I hope that you found this experiment useful. Farewell, grade seven. I shall return to my activities.